This is the Motorola Moto G54 disassembly. This specific model is the variant from India, which has a 6000 mAh battery, versus the variant from China, which has a 5000 mAh battery. Now if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell, so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. We start off by removing the SIM tray. Here's a better look at the SIM tray. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a plastic pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. The back plate is made of plastic. At this point there are 14 T4 or Torx 4 screws which need to be removed. Now for some reason on certain models, Motorola loves to hide a screw. In my opinion it's totally pointless and sometimes I just feel like they put it there to annoy people. So at this point heat needs to be applied to the camera bezel and then the bezel needs to be pried off. There are two additional T4 or Torx 4 screws to remove. Now a plastic pry tool needs to be placed in between the back housing and the frame of the screen and ran along the edges to pop off the catches. Before the back housing can be completely removed, the flex cable for the fingerprint scanner needs to be disconnected from the main board. The back housing is also made of plastic. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. So you won't need to take apart the phone to replace those. The LED flash is located here, and there's an antenna flex cable on this side. There are additional antenna flex cables around the inside border, as well as the LED flash board located here. There's some graphite film and copper tape to help transfer heat. At this point, the battery cable can be disconnected, followed by the rest of the flex cables. There are also two coaxial cables on the bottom right side of the board, which can be disconnected by just popping them off. So looking at the main board, we can see a 50 megapixel primary camera and an 8 megapixel ultrawide with macro and depth lens. The primary camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a liquid damage indicator sticker located here, which is the white sticker, and the secondary microphone located on the top. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. The proximity sensor is located on the other side as well as the 16 megapixel front facing camera. There's more graphite film and copper tape on the back shields as well as some thermal paste to help transfer heat. And the SIM and memory card reader is located underneath the graphite film. Now that the shield cover has been removed, we can see additional thermal paste on top of the processor and RAM. Here's a better look with the thermal paste removed. 
Moving on to the battery. There are no pull tabs to help us pry it off, so we'll have to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply it to the sides of the battery, and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a look at the 6000 mAh battery. And for anyone who's curious about the differences in size of battery on the variant from India versus the China variant, here are the measurements on this battery. 90.5 mm by 65 mm by 5.5 mm. Once the battery has been removed, we can see this flex cable which connects the main board to the subboard, as well as the screen flex cable which is right out through an opening in the midframe. So if you needed to replace the screen, You'd have to remove the back plate, the screws in the back housing. You'd then have to disconnect the battery cable and the screen cable and pry the battery off, giving you access to the screen cable. At which point you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath. You'd pry the old screen off, apply a new adhesive, reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back through the opening in the midframe and reassemble the phone. Looking at the speaker assembly, we can see more graphite film to help transfer heat. And here's the speaker itself. There are rubber gaskets around the charger port and headphone jack. And there's another liquid damage indicator sticker on the headphone jack. The primary microphone is located in between the headphone jack and charger port. Here's a look at the other side. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner and is held on with some adhesive, so if you needed to replace that, you just have to apply some heat and gently pry it off. The flex cable for the volume keys and power button is located here, which is also held on with some adhesive. To replace that, you have to just gently peel it off. There's a large aluminum block underneath the main camera. And this block measures 1.6 millimeters thick. The earpiece speaker is located on top, which is also held on with some adhesive. And there's another liquid damage indicator sticker on the frame underneath the SIM reader. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 5.5 out of 10. Now it's time to reassemble the phone. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.